thing. Uh, three, divi- uh, three divided uh, by three again. A box <laughs> of not chocolates to begin with. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so Ruben Bresler and Andrew Tenjum, both of which we've seen some today, they're playing for top eight, and Tenjum, as you recall, is playing that shardless bug deck that we've seen a fair bit of today. Yeah, he's uh, he's been playing it for a while, and uh, let's see, so far so good. He's about to suspend an ancestral vision here, so uh, maybe a turn after he's dead, he'll be able to draw three cards. We'll find out. Yeah, I don't know though. I mean, Bresler's combo deck, as far as combo decks go, not the fastest. Right, he would need, uh, last, when we saw him on camera earlier, he had the God Hand, which is a Painter Servant, a Grindstone, and two Ancient Tombs, leading to a turn two kill you. Um, obviously not is exactly. Is that good? Uh, turn two? <laughs> it's, definitely, it's, it's okay. It's not bad, huh? It, it, on a report card, he'd get a B plus for that. All right, so let's see what he has here. It's here. hard for anybody to really get an A. Once the uh, that elf guy wins without casting any spells, right? Kind of just no ruins spells, the curve. No land win. It's tough to do that. Tough to mirror that. Yeah, and, and not even a dredged card in sight. Oh man, is this a turn one blood moon? I don't think. Oh no, it's turn no, two. No, if, turn two. If Ruben resolves blood moon, uh, I don't want to jump the gun here, but the game is over. <laughs> he can't cast any spell in his deck. When they, he, if he, this is his turn. He's going to have turn. to go off his turn. He needs the death right shaman. Right. Because if he sticks the death right shaman, then he, he can still cast Or yes. leave two open to uh, uh, abrupt decay. Yep. There is no other option here. If he plays a Tarmogoyf, he's dead. If he plays a Dark Confident, he's dead. If no, he no, he a... can visions Bresler and deck him. Right, okay. Okay, I like this plan. I'm on board with this. But the problem is Bresler has the millstone, basically. He has the grindstone and That's deck. true. So it's hard to deck him. him. So Ooh. Andrew's trying. This is his This is his big shot. This he knows what Hail he's up Mary. against. This is the Hail Mary here. Yeah. Can he hit either a... Blood Moon or Seeming Spirit Guy? He needs to hit one of those cards. All right, Ruben. Show, show him what you're made of. He's like, I got to the 6-1-1 one, one because I know I have auto win cards in my hand. Let's see what it is. Uh, we don't want to blast. Uh, oh, Mountain. does he have another land? Two great cards, neither of which part nope. of his combo. He's going to turn to he, it. He has another. Yeah, he yes. has another land, and yep. he has the Seaman Spirit this guy. Is, this is just. He knows what. He knows how the banana peels here. Uh, so Blood Moon itself. Dunzo. And he sticks the Blood Moon rather than Magus because of the possibility of something like Dismember. Dismember right? right? They have yeah, one absolutely. Dismember. Uh, he's actually playing zero, but usually most of them do play one. Um, Andrew's going to play this match out, but he actually has literally zero chance to win. Yeah, how long do you think he goes? Uh, he's going to wait till Ruben kills him, I guess. But it's just... He just, doesn't want to leak any information. Right, he's just posturing right now. Maybe he'll just draw cards and just keep saying go. I guess part of it is you don't want to concede because you don't want Ruben to know you don't have any basics. Right, yeah. You have to just play it out. The, the good thing is, uh, Ruben and I were actually we were just talking about this matchup specifically and how I had no basics earlier. <laughs> so Ruben, he knows. And it's funny, you would know this too because you play unique decks regardless. Even though you play decks that win more than I do, probably all the time, you still put a twist on them. You play decks that are unique. When you're not playing a unique deck like Andrew, we know your whole deck list. We know, I know card for card what's in his deck to the T. It's because he's just playing the same old thing. Well, Ruben's like, you know what? I'm going to at all costs get this Blood Moon out, and I know Andrew has a less than 0% chance of winning this game. Do you lead with Magus of the Moon or with Yaya Baller? <laughs> I guess we expedite this process. All right. right. Andrew can cast Force of Will. That's the only magic card he can cast for the rest of this game. He doesn't have any artifacts either, right? Nope. He is just hanging out. Hanging out. All We're right. Just gonna, this is the point where when we commentate. Chandra's pretty good when you have your opponent plug and lock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the Chandra's would be good there. A Blaze would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Draw a card. Uh, he drew another uh, uncastable spell. Yeah. Goes in the tank, comes out with uh, anything. I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Ships the turn. Andrew, uh, can we send a memo down? It's, we never, never from the booth that we force a confe- uh, concession, but uh, no, 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 we can't leak information. Oh, I'll remember, for the booth. Remember, Ruben doesn't know that Andrew has no basics. That's true. No, he definitely suspects have, he right. has no basics. He doesn't know it. Exactly. Yeah. So let's. Uh... <coughs> all right. All right. So while Ruben's doing all this stuff, what I was thinking, <laughs> no, the, yeah, I, what I was thinking about is uh, after Mishra. I guess, well, Mishra's gone, right? Oh, oh God. All right. No, I, I, no I'll tell you what. All right. <laughs> you t- let's predict, what card will Ruben discard to the to Yaya Ballard? Or will he just hang out and then grinder servant, painter, you know, painter <laughs> servant, grindstone next turn? All right, back to about Mishra. So let's go. That seems like it's definitely more interesting than what's going on here. All right, the game. What's Ruben going to sideboard in? Oh, yeah, we can look at that right now, I guess. All right, so Ruben has Pyroblast. Um, and Ruben does take game one. Yeah, not Ruben surprisingly. Okay. Blood Moon, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. 
one card combo. Uh, Searing Bridge, no good. Ratchet Bomb is pretty good against Andrew Zek because he's a uh, hefty one and two drops there. Four Tarmogoy, four Bale, four Bale for Shrinks, Death Rite. Um, not that great though. When you're playing a combo deck, it's kind of like, do I need these cyborg cards? You really only board them in if they're necessary for you to continue to combo off. It seems like Magus of the Moon is an A+. Plus <laughs> That's a 100% going in. Uh, definitely. So he's going to have full Mag three Magus, and then how many Blood Moons we have? Four. So he has seven Blood Moons after board. Yeah. Is that does, he, just... does he want more Red Blasts? He's already got six main deck, but he's got more in the board. Let's see. What, can he, what is he going to board out? I guess I just board out all my Sensei's drops. <laughs> definitely the Chandra Pyromancer. That's can... weird. You don't like Sensei's Divining Top? Yeah, not in this deck. <laughs> no, the Sensei's Divining Top is sweet. Yeah. He's got a lot of shuffles. He's got uh, Imperial Recruiter. He's got uh, Goblin Welder, which kind of combos with Sensei's Divine Top. Yeah. He's got Chandra Pyromaster. Plus, you can grindstone yourself for Val. Yeah. So, uh, definitely the Pyromaster comes out here because it doesn't kill anything, right? The Pyromaster? It kills uh, Baleful Strikes. It draws extra cards, baby. Yeah, all right. So. Plus, it puts, a, it puts a lot of pressure on Jace. So, what are we going to Taste it. <laughs> One. He's going to zap Jace. Uh, it's, we call it sending a message. Yes. Jace knows I'm here, at least. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah, you hear that? You hear that? Jace, that's, that's me. It's me, Chandra. Spell Sky is pretty cool because it takes away Abrupt Decay shenanigans. So not only can you take the Abrupt Decay to the Spell Sky, it protects Blood Moon and Magus of the Moon. Absolutely, which is particularly sweet since you can go get it with Imperial Recruiter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't really know what to cut here. Uh, you probably... Probably Chandra. I'm still, I'm still in the cutting Chandra plan. Either that or Divine Top. You only need to shave a couple cards. Just to add the uh, Magus yeah, I mean, it's of the not moon. clear you need anything besides that one Magus of the Moon. I I mean, you cut your maybe, main deck is already perfect. Maybe the Revoker. What does he revoke here? Jace, Jace Liliana, Deathrite Shaman, Liliana. There's yeah, there's a lot of good things. Yeah, there's a lot of good things to revoke into the race. You leave Jay about it because that kills Jace. It also infernos. It does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does inferno. Jay Ballard. All right, here's a little trivia. Anybody uh, at home, if you want to win absolutely nothing, tweet at us at SCG Live. Let us know what is the flavor text. That is attributed to Jaya, uh, to, to Jaya Ballard uh, in Ice Age. Uh, Ice Age, Jaya Ballard has a uh, has a at least one piece of flavor text. Um, actually, two. But the, the the flavor text on the card that costs one mana. What is the flavor text, or two mana for that matter? If you know either of the flavor texts of the Ice Age cards that uh, Jaya Ballard is credited with the quote on. Tweet at us at SCG Live when absolutely nothing, and be the first so that you can be right and be right first. Yes, and also when everyone else is wrong, you will rise above being the right one. Yeah, and if you Google this, I swear that is that is just so. Don't search don't do this. Yeah, yeah. Don't even Bing it. Yeah. I mean, first of all, it's not practical. It's not going to be the right answer. But yeah. don't even <laughs> search at all. Just pull it out of your memory, or don't. Yes. It is legal to, of course, call you know, phone a friend, call somebody up and ask him. Right. You know, maybe a magic historian. It, if maybe. you have either of those cards in your deck right now, it's also legal to look at them. Right. That's that's totally legal. That's fine too. There's no Google. Hex and if Google. your mom knows, that is also illegal. Hi yeah. to my mom. <laughs> no, my my mom's probably watching right now. Oh, is she I'm, awesome? Yeah, I'm a big my mom fan. Awesome. Well, hello, uh, Mrs. Chapin. Absolutely. Um, my mom is not watching because this would be full gibberish to her. Yeah, oh, it's sure. gibberish for my mom, too. <laughs> I'm sure she gets a little bit by now, though, right? She watched enough? Oh, yeah, she to be sure. I mean, it. it's not clear that, that my mom doesn't cosplay as Jaya Ballard cast magic <laughs> at times. Cosplaying as Jaya Ballard. There I mean, we when go. When was the last time anybody cosplayed as Jaya Ballard? Because, like, obviously... I see Jace all the time. I yeah. wonder, is Chandra and Jaya Ballard, are they, like, linked somehow? They look very similar. I, they're, they're Maybe certainly... they're both red and they both wear red clothing. Could be the reason. We this would need a, can we get, a, should we call for a picture of Jai Baller compared to Chandra? Do you want to get that up on the screen? Or? Is, if we have, actually, if, if anybody at home, if anybody at home has any Our deviant, producer says any, no. links, <laughs> any links to deviant art where there is uh, any fan art of Jaya Ballard and Chandra side by side, perhaps, I don't know, fighting, anything safe for work, uh, let us know. Tweet at us at SCG Live. And we'll uh, give you um, nothing, nothing, but okay. we will appreciate it. And maybe we'll uh, talk about a little bit in the story, you know, where it, you know, how uh, General Jarkeld fits into the mix. I know who that is. He's the guy that does Sorrow's Path from Ice Age. Still lost. Okay, so Martin Stromgold was a general in, uh, in like, uh, 
No, this is true. All right, continue. <laughs> so, on the uh, in the time of Ice Age, which is actually a very long time ago, uh -huh. uh, and but not so long ago as the Earth, the Brothers' War. Right. It was actually the Brothers' War that caused the Ice Age. Okay, so Ice Age was actually an Ice Age of magic, right? So we're on this oh, world yeah. here, and there's an Ice Age. This isn't, world is it magic sure. multiple worlds though? Yes, but the Ice Age took place on the main one, which is where Urza and all that stuff took place. Oh, okay, which is where okay. a lot of the core sets are. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad we survived the Ice Age. Oh yeah, I mean everybody yeah. survived except right. the people who died. But like, <laughs> it wasn't even that bad. <laughs> Nothing compared to the mending. The mending. Oh yeah, I remember you mentioned. Yeah, the I mending. mean things are different now. They got gotcha. you. We can never go back. Oh well, speaking of different. Legacy is just different than it used to be. Just just getting outright silly nowadays. I got news for you, man. I don't know if you played in a Legacy tournament in the last eight years. This is how they roll. Legacy players, it's crazy. Legacy players are like, all right, here's the thing. We're going to turn the gravity off in the physics engine. We're going to have like quantum mechanics happening at a macro level. We're going to have time travel randomly happening to people whenever it's not their birthday, but on their okay. birthday is the only day you know that you're not traveling through time. Right. And it's crazy. That's the kind of world that Legacy is. So you're calling them all uh, pretty much lunatics. No, I'm calling them adventurous. Adventurous, okay. Yes, adventurous. Okay. Like every, every round in Legacy is a foray into adventure. It is, actually. Yes. Sometimes the adventures are like in that book we talked about, the Choose Your Own Adventure. Sometimes the adventure is abrupt and kills you immediately, right? Yeah, and sometimes the agonizing. adventure chooses you. Yeah. <laughs> so Ruben, is he going to drop a thorn of amethyst on turn one? Uh, he is. The nice wow. thing about this is this actually makes it real hard for, for Andrew to, to disrupt him with that hand of Turok that's right, going to come right. out next turn. Oh, he has no blue. Yep. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. No blue equals uh, an, an atrocious hand. So he's going to just continue to hang out. He doesn't have a third land, though, either. Is a blood coming, too? Yeah. Well, he can't. He has Thorn of Amethyst. Oh, never mind. Yeah, okay. soon. Soon. I'm just too excited when I see the but Blood Moon. But Imperial Recruiter to go get Magus. So, with the Blood Moon in mind, I still like the Thorn of Amethyst, Amethyst play because if you lead off with Bayou, it has to be clear that him to Trox coming. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if he uses his Force here, he's going to lose again. Unless he draws another Yeah, Bresler is putting an awful lot of pressure on Tengen with all these virtual win the game cards right. you know blood moon magus of the moon things yeah. to go find them you actually don't have to force this card because he doesn't get anything that is unforceable correct the only thing he can possibly but, get is a simian spirit guide but he gets to use his mana now yes which has right. the advantage correct. in case correct. he wants to abrupt decay. Like he needs a land here off the top okay he did not draw the land so now he will get blood moon if he drew a land he could have floated two and then abrupt decayed but now alas so what do you think do you just pack it in here yeah yeah, when Blood Moon hits, do you just, you know, call the call the whole thing off? Yeah, I mean... Because at this point, what are you trying to prove? It's nothing, the last yeah. round of the tournament. Um, oh, he's not going for it. Yeah, so Bresler is going to slow play this one. He'd rather just be careful. Oh. Nothing wrong with that. All right, Andrew continues to do nothing. I think you... He's throwing a Vamethyst He didn't top at a turn. Um, okay, so... He, well, he didn't want to take damage. Okay, so he plays Blood Moon. Now he plays the Blood Moon, and... <coughs> uh, All right, we're going to concede here. He, Ruben with one mana floating. With 36 minutes left in the round, both players still have time to uh, to go hang yeah, out. Okay, that's it. Yeah, Andrew offers the hand. There's nothing more to fake. You know, when it's game one, you want to protect the information about whether or not you have basics. Right, yeah. But at this point, it's a done deal. <laughs> Ruben Bresler doing what his deck does, which is get free wins from Blood Moon, among other things. <laughs> Ruben Bresler skillfully Blood Mooning his opponent's well, absolutely. deck. Absolutely, but you got to remember, there's lots of skills being tested in Magic all the time. One of the skills is what cards do you choose to play with. Yeah. And I mean, Ruben Bresler chose to play a Blood Moon deck. That's a huge, a huge talent in this game is card selection, card choice, and even deck your book selection. you talk about how to be next level, right? You, <laughs> I'm sure in that novel, Smooth. in that literature that you created, 